With good prompting techniques, you can get the most out of AI models like ChatGPT. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to talk about prompting techniques for AI models. I'm going to show you six different techniques and also I'm going to give you the example prompts that you can use. Let's start with the first one. Let's start with the basics. So what exactly is a prompt? A prompt is the input that you give ChatGPT to generate a response. However, not all prompts are equally effective. So let's start with a vague prompt like tell me about history and we are going to see that it generates something like history is the study of past events, societies, cultures and it's the generic response that might not be what you need. Instead let's refine it like give me a brief history of the Roman empire highlighting its rise and fall in 200 words and now we are going to get a more specific answer we can see that it bolts the roman empire and gives information like this and when we give the in 200 words it sets a length limit in here let's try another thing like this so i'm going to say give me a writing advice what I'm going to say is now it's going to give a generic thing I'm going to say give me five writing tips for creating engaging blog posts that rank well on Google let's try this one so now here we can see that it gives a more specific response like this now in this video I'm not going to be reading all the answers that ChatGPT generates because I want this video to be too short and I'm just going to talk about the prompting techniques. Now we started with basics, we are going to go into more technical prompting techniques like chain of thought prompting, zero shot, one shot, fifth shot prompting techniques. And we are going to go step by step and cover that how we can write better prompts for using ChatGPT more effectively. So let's continue. To get better answers, always provide context. Without it, ChatGPT has to guess what you mean. So let's compare these two prompts. Write an email. We are going to see that it's going to give something like this. And now I'm going to say, write an email about kindly rejecting a candidate's job application. I want it to be formal and I am the human resources manager. And now we are going to see that we are going to have a specific email template like this. It provides the relevant and structured response. And let's try something else. Explain photosynthesis like this. And also I'm going to say after explain photosynthesis in simple terms as if you are teaching a 10 year old student like this now we are going to see that it says sure imagine a plant is like a little chef that makes its own food using sunlight it actually teaches like teaching it to a 10 year old student great so now we are going to talk about structuring our prompts for precision so one of the powerful ways to get precise responses is by structuring your prompt effectively. Like let's say, give me tips on productivity. And now we are going to see that it gives tips like this. And let's wait it to finish its response. Now I'm going to try something like, give me five productivity tips for remote workers focusing on and now I'm going to say time management and I will say avoiding distractions and work life balance I will say using productivity tools and I will say staying motivated now we are going to see our response in here Actually, in here we said that 
ChatGPT, you are going to focus on this thing and we give five topics in here and it generates it with these topics. Like you can see the bullet points after the topics that we give. Now let's talk about defining the response style. So if you want to different tone, we need to specify it like, let's say, explain quantum physics in simple terms for a high school student. Let's see the response on this with white uh, humorous take on quantum physics for a casual blog post. And let's see the response on this. So in here, we can see that our response is more like an introduction level. And in here, we have a more advanced level of response when we specify it like this. And also we can set word limits. So let's say summarize the French Revolution. And next I'm going to say summarize the key events of the French Revolution in under 100 words. And our response on this is going to be maximum of 100 words. And we control the length of the text it's going to generate. And one other technique is the role-based prompting. So role-based prompting helps you get responses tailored to a particular expertise. So let's say like act as a financial advisor and give me investment strategies for beginners. And now it's going to act as a financial advisor and it's going to generate the response. And also we can make stuff like, let's say you are a personal trainer. Create a four week beginner workout plan using only body weight exercises. And here is our response. It gives the guidelines. It's going to give the week one like this. It also gives different options like we can select from this workout plans. We can see the week two is going to be generated in here. And we are going to have week three. And also it's going to generate the week four. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the handling complex requests. So let's say that we are going to say write a detailed business plan for a coffee shop in New York and let's wait for its response it gives the executive summary vision and mission business objectives market analysis and it gives stuff like this and other than that I'm going to say first give me an outline for a coffee shop business plan and I'm going to wait for it to finish actually I'm going to say detailed outline and here we can see that it generates the bullet points like this and I'm waiting for it to finish And okay, it's going to be finishing soon. So what I'm going to do is let's see the previous response in here. Like it was like this. And now if we want to go more specific on the responses, we can say that now give me the executive summary, the table the, for all the bullet points you generate in the previous response. Now it's going to expand the executive summary part and with this expanding we are going to have a more detailed plan like this. Here we can see that in the executive summary part we have a more detailed response like this. Okay this was the introductionary part and now we are going to talk about the more technical prompting techniques. So I opened a new page and let's start with zero shot prompting. So zero shot prompting is the simplest way to interact with ChatGPT. 
It is when you ask a ChatGPT a question without giving it any examples or prior context. The AI generates the answer based only on its training data. So let's say like summarize the plot of the great Gatsby. And also we can give an example like translate this English sentence into French and we are going to say hello how are you and these are our examples on zero shot prompting and for the one shot prompting it improves responses by providing one example before asking ChatGPT to perform a task like instead of write a formal resignation email what we are going to say is we are going to say here is an example of a resignation email and let's say like dear and let's not add name i am writing to formally resign from my position at your company my last working day will be and let's say something like 20 10 2030 Thank you for the opportunities you have given me best. And here is our example. Now I'm going to add codes like this. And now we are going to give prompt after giving this example. I will say, now please write a resignation email for someone leaving due to relocation and let's see our response by showing one example ChatGPT understands the format and tone you want like in here we can see that it generated the text based on our format and we are going to use one shot prompting when a structure or tone is important or when ChatGPT struggles to generate the right style or when you need a response similar to a specific example and now let's talk about fifth shot prompting Fifth shot prompting takes it one step further by giving multiple examples before asking ChatGPT to generate a response. Instead of saying something like classify the sentiment of this review and adding a review like this, we are going to say here are examples of sentiment classification. Let's say like the food was terrible and it's going to be negative and we will say the service was okay and it's going to be neutral and the food was amazing it's going to be positive and next we are going to give our prompt like now classify let's say like the wait time was long but the food was delicious and let's see our response in here it says the sentiment of the sentence the wait times was long but the food was delicious would be neutral while it mentions a negative aspect it also highlights a positive one balancing the overall sentiment this technique teaches the model patterns and rules to follow so when we use that we are going to use fifth shot prompting for classification or categorization tasks or when we need higher accuracy and also when we need desired response format in a complex format so let's talk about chain of thought prompting sometimes ChatGPT makes mistakes in logical or mathematical problems that's where chain of thought prompting comes in this technique forces ChatGPT to explain its reasoning step by step instead of just giving an answer so instead of what is 24 times 13, we are going to say solve 24 times 13 step by step by and we will say explaining all the steps and I'm going to make this run and it's going to give all the process like this and it's going to show its calculations making it less likely to make errors like this here we can see our response and also for the logical reasoning side i'm going to say who is taller alice 
or Bob. Instead of giving like this, we are going to say compare Alice and Bob. We are going to give it like this, and we will say and explain who is taller step by step by showing all the steps. And here we are going to get our response. We can see that it's going to find Bob is taller. We are going to use chain of thought prompting when we do math or logic problems or complex reasoning tasks or any question where step by step thought is needed. Now we are going to talk about multi turn and iterative prompting. So instead of relying on one perfect prompt, use multi turn conversations to improve results. So let's start to our example like write a short sales pitch for a productivity app and let's wait for our response. Now I'm going to say make it more engaging with a question at the start. And here it added struggling to stay on top of your to do list. So great. And let's say like add a call to action at the end. And here we are going to see that at the end it's going to give your future self will thank you. Download this app. Great. We are going to use this method when adjustments are needed or for creative tasks like writing or when responses need fine tuning. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let's get to the outro. Thanks for watching my video. I have more AI videos on my channel. You can subscribe for more. Have a great day.